in this video, you're going to see after this incident here, Karma in Motion. Hey guys and welcome along to another video. If this is your first time here and you're watching all sorts of sim racing related stuff, subscribe now and click the bell icon so you get notified of every video I upload and you don't miss a thing. Here we are at Suzuka in Daily Race 3 in the Group 3s. So I did about 10 minutes worth of qualifying before this one. Not enough I know but time permitting and real life and all that sort of stuff. So we ended up just outside the two minute mark I think it was a uh, two minutes and seven tenths or something like that and that is going to leave us an eighth place for this one so we'll definitely be looking to move up we're in the KFC Lexus which is a rare one in this one amongst an absolute sea of Porsches we've got 10 laps here at Suzuka and as always I'm going to try and keep the first lap clean and be mindful of fuel because in this one all it is is a one stopper you're going to have to change tyres anyway so I think a lot of good work can be done if you hang on in terms of ragging the hell out of it save yourself some fuel so we don't have to stop for as long jump some people in the pits and you can do some good work that way especially in the dailies as well it's particularly dangerous to overtake people We've seen it all before and I'm sure everyone watching this video has been a victim of it as well. There is some robust defending going on during the day in these dailies. So as you can see here, I am fuel saving down the back straight. As soon as I start catching them, I flick up to as high a gear as possible and I end up in sixth gear. So I'm not going to have to do much to get this place because the Swiss Senna is going to get it wrong coming out of 130R. He's just going to run a little bit wide there, end up on the Astro, lose the back end and come straight across the track, slam into the Arnco on the inside, and we're going to come up to 7th place. So, not a bad first lap there. Gone up one place, stayed out of trouble. So, moving on to lap number 2, we're going to try and get after these guys here up in front we've got a German and we also have a Ukrainian now we're going to march straight up to the back of them and I'm not really sure whether they're quick enough to sit behind at this point normally you can make a call if someone is particularly quick then it's fine they'll drag you along quite nicely you won't get any pressure from the guy behind and you'll also be able to save some fuel but I'm not sure about these guys to date we're going to have to see how it pans out but coming out the second Degna here the German's going to run a little bit wide onto that Astro and he's going to almost end up on the inside of the Armco we've been there ourselves before lose all his momentum here down into the hairpin and we're going to go up the inside and end up taking sixth place Moving on to lap number three here, the guy in front is definitely beginning to hold us up. We've taken as much advantage as we can by fuel saving as much as we can, but I'm not sure that's going to be enough. So we're going to get a good run out of Spoon here. He's going to go defensive, and as we know, two do not go through 130R. So I'm going to pull out of this one here which is going to allow the Dutchman who was lurking in 7th to come up the inside we briefly lose the position he's going to go down the inside here so I'm going to hang it around the outside which is going to then turn into the inside coming down the pit straight so giving him enough room on the exit there so he's not run off into the gravel we're managing to just hold on to this position here keen to get back into the Ukrainian in front slipstream there we've managed to just hold on to 6th place but you can see how much time that it lost to the Ukrainian. It just goes to show how much time and how much sort of quicker we are than the guys in front. I don't know if their tyres are going off or anything like that. But as you can see there, he's sliding around. I see the opportunity and through I go. So 
I was looking for that to be honest, I couldn't wait any longer, we were losing too much time. As you can see now we're 4.7ish, 4.8 seconds behind the Spaniard in fourth, so it's time for me to get my head down and try and get after them. So as we come down to the Casio triangle here on lap number 5, our in-lap, we've actually closed the gap to 3.2 seconds to the Spaniard who was in 4th. So we managed to take some time out of them. I actually had 25% fuel left, second best out of everyone apart from the German. But, well, we kind of did a good job, but I did spend a lot of time out of the slipstream, so that could probably be accepted. So I've overfueled here. I normally do by about half a lap so that I do not have to worry about it. The last thing that I need to do is to be worrying about fuel on top of everything else that's going on and generally keeping this thing on track. And you're going to see an example of why it's worth overfilling in the second race. But I'm going to come out in sixth here as Busey, the Dutchman, didn't pit, but I expect him in this lap. To be honest, there's no way he's going to go to the end he's just not got enough fuel so we can see the group up ahead here and we're going to see if we can close them down in the second half of this race so as we come across the line to start lap number seven we're down to 2.8 seconds so progress has been made starting lap number eight another eight tenths of a second has come off the total you can see they're getting visually closer here now down to just under two seconds. 1.4 seconds now as we start the penultimate lap. So it could be pretty close. But unfortunately that was about as close as we were going to get. As we start lap number 10 here, we're 1.8 seconds off them now. They're almost so close that we can touch, but not quite close enough. I mean, there's a slight hope that they really do battle and they get sort of drawn into us but if that happens then great if not I'm happy with solidifying and bringing home this fifth place and I guess it was meant to be so we come home to solidify fifth place not a bad result as I say up a few places and we're going to move on to race number two so here we are then, starting fourth in this one. The guy directly in front of me is an A plus ranked driver. He's a really quick guy, driver pro racing that I've raced before. So I potentially have a run right away on him, but I'm gonna pull out of it and immediately fuel save. Because if these guys stay together, fuel could be the key in this one. Again, a bit more of a variety but mainly 911s and the three in front are definitely 911s so that could well be the car of choice around here but we're going to stick with the Lexus we're going to keep keep going with this because mainly it's a car that I'm comfortable with which is very very important guys and also I've done many races in this and I'm doing the manufacturers in so if I can get a good result with this car and everything I can learn about this car can only benefit me in the FIAs, which are the real things that matter. So as always, as we sit here in fourth, we're going to try and just stay clean, stay with these guys, stay out of trouble, and then really try and come alive in the second half of the race. As we come across the line to start lap number two, I remain behind third place, just changing up there to take full advantage of the slipstream that we've got of him to try and save as much fuel as possible. The guy in first is beginning to pull away there, you can see him the Brit, but these other two here, as I've run a little bit wide, could, if we stay with them, be easily jumped if we do a good enough job with the fuel saving. So that is the aim right now, we're going to keep doing that and see how it all pans out. We're going to jump forward slightly to the start of the fourth lap and I said earlier it's all well and good staying behind people and saving fuel but you've got to balance it with how much it's damaging your race and 
the guy in second now is really beginning to hold up the guy in third here so we're gonna have to start thinking about making a move they're both all over the place here you can see them all sliding around up in front and we're gonna get an absolute front row seat to the guy here getting in all sorts of problems so as we come through here through the S's up towards the Dunlop curve here the Belgian is just going to get on the loud pedal too much we're going to get a better run on him here and we're going to drive all the way around the outside of him which is going to give us the inside into the first Degna now he pulls out of the move to try and give me as good a line as possible fair play to him for that otherwise it's just going to hold us up even more when we're both trying to get past this guy here in second place now after four-ish laps I think I've done a pretty decent job in terms of fuel saving so I'm really really going to push now and try and overtake this guy because I think if I play my cards right second could be on the cards I'm going to fuel save at this point because I'm not going to overtake anyone coming up into spoon but if the opportunity arises uh, the run's probably not going to be good enough here we want to stay close enough but we're also not close enough to make a move so again I'm just going to flick up to 6th and if I'm not able to make a move just save as much fuel as possible but as I say if the opportunity arises we're going to make a move I'm going to break here I'm going to give him a slight tap I think I misjudged it I think he also broke a little bit earlier there but either way I'm going to flash my lights just to apologise to him here he's kept the place for now he's going to go defensive here and we're going to try and go down the outside into turns one and two now I have to trust this guy quite a lot as we come down into turn number one we've got it so far and it looks like we're going to make the move but then just watch this he's just going to run us straight off the track ah <sighs> fantastic I mean some people might say that he had the right to for me I wouldn't have done it and also when I looked at the replay I was actually in front of him only by a hair but I was still in front and you just you just don't really want to do that but never mind not going to dwell on it too much I do want to overtake him though and this is our in lap so I'm just going to try and not lose any more time here and see what the fuel looks like when it comes to the pit stop because as I said earlier I think I've done a pretty good job so as we come into the pits here at the end of our in lap we've actually done a really really good job with the fuel so I had 30% left third had 23 and second had 26 so I did the best job out of us three and again I overfilled slightly because it's the last thing I want to be doing is worrying about fuel on top of everything else I'm going to come out just behind pro racing and I'm going to drop back from him a little bit now this is a gamble and I'm going to explain why but I need him to stop worrying about me the closer I am to him he's going to start defending and he's going to start looking at his mirrors and stuff I know at this point in time, or well, from the previous laps of this race, I can catch up with him. So I'm going to give him a few laps here, I'm going to keep an eye on the gap between him and the guy up in front, but I'm going to let him have an opportunity to try and chase him down, which hopefully is going to drag them both into us. But I'm only going to give him sort of two or three laps for this, and if not, I'm going to really, really push and get after him myself. As we start the penultimate lap here, he hasn't made as much of an inroad as I'd hoped. So, time's up. I'm going to start pushing really, really hard and I'm going to start trying to take those places for myself. So through pushing we've actually caught him up and we're right behind him now. We've taken almost a second out of him in the last lap. So things are looking good there. He's going to go defensive. And again, I've kind of been burnt 
by the last time out. I don't think that this guy would do the same, but I really don't want to be run off the track again. So I pull out of that move, and we're going to stay on board for this final lap here as we make our way round this Suzuka circuit here in Japan. Now, I mentioned earlier, and I've mentioned a couple of times in this video, about fuel. So we're starting to catch the guy in second and unbeknownst to me at the time and no doubt to the Belgian at the time this guy is really really struggling with his fuel so what he did is he short filled in the replay and he's now really really paying for it at the moment you can see I've got loads and loads of fuel left to be honest there's not well there's loads and loads but there's not too much yes we're not on the fuel warning light at the moment but we're going to be by the end of this lap so you're going to see the Porsche up in front he's currently short shifting and he's really really going to be worrying about that fuel so as we come down into spoon here for the final time we're right behind the guy in third now we're going to get a bit of a slide on coming out of spoon as the track drops away there but nothing major and we're both marching up closer and closer to the Porsche and as we come through 130R towards the Casio Triangle for the final time the Porsche is going to run out of fuel watch this so the Porsche is going to run out of fuel in second he's going to get hit by that guy there they're going to bounce back and forth and then I'm going to overtake them both and come home in second place and the guy who ran me off is going to end up all the way down in fifth and as Fernando Alonso says my friend that is karma and for now guys that is the end of the video I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't already thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one cheers